Right now I'm doing more video calls than ever and I know I'm not the only one running around trying to find a place that's presentable to take these calls. And for that reason, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a mobile wall that you can use as a background, room divider, or anything you need to take videos and photos on. So in essence, I'm gonna take you from this boring background to something more exciting like this. And I'm gonna show you how to build this from start to finish. Thanks to Home Depot for sponsoring this video and for a limited time, you can take advantage of their Labor Day savings happening over at homedepot.com. I'll tell you more on that later in the video, but for now, let's get to it. Now that I have all my materials, I'm gonna cut down a couple pieces of one by three to go ahead and create the frame. A circular saw is the only saw you will need for this project, so that make it pretty doable. I laid out the frame to get a visual of what I'm going to assemble. Now, although you don't need a pocket hole jig for this project, I just happened to have one and I felt like it made it a bit easier. I drilled two holes on each end of the studs, and then I repeated that until I completed them all. Now it's just a matter of assembling everything together. I started with the frame and then I worked my way in. And for the purpose of this project, it's not crucial, but I spaced all the studs equally apart. Now that I have the first side complete, I jumped to the other end to close off the frame. Before I secure the inner studs, I check for squaring on the frame. At this point, I have some wiggle room so I can shift the frame back and forth until I get it squared. After I square that up, I can now finish off the frame. I have my frame as square as possible, so I'm gonna leave it flat on the floor and do not disturb it too much. Then I took some wood glue and applied it along the side. The wood glue is gonna do a great job of holding onto this quarter inch sheet of plywood. I went with the plywood because it was smooth on one side and on top of that, it was also very light. I lined up the plywood to the frame and then I used a brad nailer to secure the plywood. This is a full sheet of four by eight plywood. And because of the height I chose, I need four sheet of plywood for this project. When this project is done, you'll be able to use it indoors and roll it outside when you need to. So the weight is super important and also the height of it is important. As long as the door is below 80 inches, I'll be able to roll this into any bedroom. Unlike the first sheet of plywood, I have to cut the second plywood to fit the frame. Right where the two pieces of plywood meet, that's a weak point, so I need to add some sort of backing, which is what I'm doing here. Just like the first side, I'll apply wood glue to the side of the frame, and then I'll lay the plywood down and nail those on. Now that the wall is built, I need to put it on wheels. Now these are not my favorite wheels, but for this project, this works because it gives me the perfect height to fit through the doorway. Aside from the casters, we'll need some lag bolts, two by four, and some brackets. I lined up the casters to the two by four, marked the holes, and then drilled them. With the holes pre-drilled, I can line up the casters and now install the lag bolts. You can get by without using these metal brackets, but you have to properly support this to the feet. These brackets are pretty strong and I think it gives off the cleanest look. Attaching the brackets to the wall seems to be the easiest way by leaving it on the floor and clamping it. I pre-drilled the holes, installed the lag bolts, and then it was on to the other side. Trying to figure out the order of these things can be a bit tricky, but to speed this process up, I'm gonna mark exactly where the bracket is going to land on the feet. To add the feet, I need to lift this, and since there's no handle, a clamp works great.
One side of this wall is gonna be wrapped with pallets and I'm painting the wall so that you can't see through the pallets and possibly see the plywood. Majority of the time when I'm painting an interior project, I'm often using a paint with primer mixed in to sort of speed up the process. I don't spray a lot, but I absolutely prefer that method. And because I don't have a good ventilation system, I often see a lot of overspray. Now I have some pallets that's been sitting in the sun for quite some time, so a lot of them do have a bit of an aged look to it, which is what I was going for, so I'm very excited about that. My only concern was do I have enough to complete this project. When working with pallets, you can find some good stuff and often you can find some stuff that are not so great. Before using these pallets, I need to clean them up and I'm gonna use a circular saw to cut off the ends to create a straight edge so that they can all fit together. The pallets are cut to different length and that should give a random look. Once I'm done with all the cutting, I separated the pallets into different piles. Each pile was based on the width of the pallet, which is important to keep the consistent look going across. Each row will have random pieces of pallets. The only caveat is they need to be the same height. The quickest way to install these is using a brad nailer and I use one inch nails for these pallets. Now each row needs to be the same thickness. This way I keep a straight line going all the way across. Once the first row is complete, I'll start the next. This process is gonna be pretty repetitive installing all of these pallets, so I'll continue doing that and let you in on the latest. Labor Day is approaching and who doesn't like to save? We all have things to do and I understand the concern of going out. There's no better time than right now to take advantage of Home Depot Labor Day saving event. You can find all sorts of deals to tackle your home projects like this M18 cordless drill and impact driver combo kit with two batteries. This event covers a wide range of products including paint, paint accessories, bathroom vanities, storage solution, and for a limited time, you can save up to 40% on kitchen and laundry room appliances. This event ends soon, so now is the time to take advantage of the Labor Day savings by shopping exclusively at homedepot.com. This whole process is pretty simple, but it does take time. It's sort of like putting a puzzle together. As a way to keep going without too much interruption, I work from the left to right. And as you see, I left the right side open. So once I get to the end, I can take scrap pieces and fill in those gaps. Doing it this way allow me to solely focus on attaching the parts. This wall has two sides to it. Side one is done, now it's time to address side two. On this side I'll be painting it, but I need to fill in the nail heads and also the plywood joint. Since I'm painting this, I think you can go about this a number of ways, whether you wanna use joint compound, I'm actually using a wood filler, and I think either one of those would work just fine. As the wood filler is drying, I'll tape off the areas that would not be painted. After a while, I'm able to sand down the wall and prepare it for paint. This is a bare paint, which is their marquee line and it's known for the one coat application. And this color here is called Iron Mountain, which I really like it. It's a pretty thick coat and for what I'm using it for here, I only use one coat and it really looks good. This paint also has primer built in, so you can apply primer if you like, but you don't have to. Unlike the other side, I'm not gonna spray it and that's because I receive a ton of overspray and I wasn't too thrilled about that and that's because I don't have the right setup in here, but that is gonna be a project on my to-do list and I will be taking care of that sooner than later. The wall's pretty much complete now, but I wanna add something to it that I feel like that's going to make it stand out even more. I think adding an LED accent panel is gonna allow you to change the look and feel of your background. Removing this section here will allow me to wrap the LED strip around the accent panel. After drilling the pocket holes, I can put these parts together to create a simple hook frame. Right now, I feel these parts are gonna get knocked around a lot, so I'm gonna glue these together so that the joint can stay together as long as possible. And now this frame is done, so I need to create one more. Now that these parts are fully assembled, I'm gonna apply wood glue to the back of these, and I'll take the cutoff plywood from the previous panels and attach them to these. The LED strip will be wrapped around this, creating that background glow. 
The glow is what this is all about. You don't want to see a hard light behind you, but rather a soft light. So the plywood is going to overhang at least one inch beyond the wood. Adding this piece to the top gives a finished look and also stabilizes the hooks. Originally I was going to make one panel but after looking at this one I like the concept so I made a second one and I made this one a bit slimmer because I used lumber I had versus going out and picking up what I originally designed for this. And personally I like the slim down version a bit more. The overall idea for this wall is to open up possibilities. I see the accent panels as an added benefit, and this should give you a ton of inspiration and ideas on what you can do for your background. Being that I have a couple of these, I'll experiment with different finishes. One key thing here is keeping all the colors flat. This way surrounding lights doesn't bounce off the paint. For this first panel, I wanted to experiment a bit using a off-white paint and some green. Now I have a picture in my head, but bringing it to life can always be a challenge. But I'll try my luck and if I don't like it, I'll switch it up. This is a vermin green and I like the color choice, it's pretty bold, but I'm just concerned about the coloring technique. And if it doesn't work out to my liking, I can always switch it up and just paint over it. Or just paint the entire panel green. Now going through the motions, I do have some mixed feelings about this, but I'm going to go through regardless and I'll evaluate at the end once it's all together and it's sitting by the wall. If I don't like it, again, I just switch it up. I wanted options and that's why I went with a couple different panels and even going through this, I think I'm going to create more panels just so I can have that additional flexibility. For this second panel, I use a dark walnut Danish oil. I was a bit concerned about the amount I had left in the can and I was trying my best to stretch this and complete the project with it. A new container may not have the same tone, so I was scraping the can to get as much as I could out of it. Thankfully I was able to make it to the end, now all I need to do is wrap it with LED strips and we'll get to see the final product. Unlike the first panel, I drill a hole to pass the LED through the frame. Now I'll pass the LED strip through the bottom of the frame and leave the end of it on the inside near the bottom. Now that I have the LED attached to the frame, I'll cut off the excess. You can only cut these strips at a specific location, so look for the copper marking. With this setup, I can set up my background pretty much anywhere, even if I want it to be in the shop. Now I have a world of possibilities when it comes to my background. I don't have to let anybody see what my space look like. I can change the space and you'll think I'm in a completely different space. I can take off some of the panels. I can add individual panels. I can flip the wall around and just have a blank gray wall. Like the opportunities are just endless. If I wanted to, I can attach floating shelves to this and just make it look like I have an office background. And trust me, I know the struggle of running around the space trying to find somewhere to either do a video intro or an outro. It doesn't matter if you're doing video calls, if you're a YouTuber, if you're a photographer, whatever you are, you can have an amazing background. So whether you're doing it for work or just a personal preference, this wall is pretty doable. The best part about this, it's done. If you build one, share it with me. I'd love to see what you do to it. And that pretty much wraps this one up. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and shout out to James for being the top supporter of the month. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button if you choose to do so, and make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this project. Until next time, I'll see you.